personal. It's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. So pretty, pretty big stuff going on in the Cruiserweight, the cruiserweight division, and I, I really do like this fight. If, if this fight actually goes ahead and winds up happening, then man, oh man, I know a lot of people may not like this fight because they they're not a big fan of Lawrence Acoli's style, but I love this fight because I feel like this is the kind of fight that will bring out the best in the sauce, Lawrence Acoli. But uh, it was reported that Lawrence Acoli and Chris Billum Smith have both verbally agreed to fight each other May 27th at, in Chris Billum Smith's hometown at the Vitality Stadium in Bournemouth, the home of uh, Bournemouth Football Club in the Premier League. Now, I like this fight because uh, first and foremost, these guys have familiarity with, with, with each other. You know, Chris Billum Smith, um, is trained by Shane McGuigan. Lawrence Acoli is formerly trained by Shane McGuigan. Obviously, as we know, he's moved on to now be working with under the watchful eye of uh, Sugar Hill Stewart, right? So with that being said, you know, there's familiarity there. And Chris Bill Smith is a kind of fighter. He's got an all-action style. Yes, he can box. Yes, he's tall and he is long. But but he, he's, he's a guy that, generally speaking, has is very physical. And to fight Chris Bill and Smith, you got you, you got to really be tough. You got to be a really tough man, made out of different material. Look at Isaac Chamberlain last year. What he had to go through in that fight. I had both his orbital bones broken in the fight, and um, you know showed a lot of grit. And actually, her had Chris Bill and Smith hurt multiple times in the fight. So with that being said, um, unless you're someone as tough as Isaac Chamberlain, which is there's not many guys in the cruiser cru 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 division as tough as Isaac Chamberlain, you'll end up like Arnold Jojai did when he fought Chris Bill and Smith, and you'll end up flattened on the floor. In, in devastating fashion. So I like this fight because Lawrence Acoli, I think, is a fighter that in order to get the best out of him, you need to put him in, a, in there with a fighter who can put him under severe pressure and real danger. Otherwise, as you guys saw, and I'm, I'll talk about it a little bit later on in the video, but David, the David Lights of the world are just going to always be a, a, a smooth summer's walk for Lawrence Acoli. Um, he'll, fight, he'll fight in that tall, long rangey style. He'll stay in the middle of the ring. He'll, he'll mix in the right hand every now and then. If a knockout doesn't come, he'll just box his way to an easy decision, you know. Uh, and he'll get criticized for being called boring. They say uh, it's like watching paint dry watching a fight, you know, and, and rightfully so. Sometimes, you know, I, I like Lawrence. Lawrence is a he's a fan of the channel. You know, we're cool. I like Lawrence, but, you know, to be real, yeah, a lot of the times it is like watching that. But, I mean, I can appreciate his style because he's dominant within his style. There's guys that are more exciting than Lawrence Acoli, but they haven't mastered their style. He's, he's I don't want to say he's quite mastered his style, but he knows himself and he fights within himself. And I think with Sugar Hill Stewart, he's, uh, he actually is developing. And I wanted to kind of pivot off of this whole Chris Bill and Smith thing because to kind of get my take on the David Light fight, because I did, I, did, I did make a video about it, but like I was outside filming and then the wind was all weird, so I didn't, I didn't like it. So here's my take on the fight since it's happened. First and foremost, let me just say this. I like David Light, and I'm not trying to put him down, but he's got to be like one of the, the, the worst world, world title challengers in years because he didn't perform well when he fought Brandon Glenn. It, he held a lot and got dropped and was very lucky to get a decision. Um, very disputed decision. I thought Brandon Glenn beat him. And then when he fought Akoli, he just ran out of ideas after about a minute and a half. Um, he just came pressing forward and had nothing but just come forward and, and try to be physical. And that was not never that was never going to work with Lawrence Akoli. So Lawrence just kind of stayed in the middle of the ring and outboxed him. But what, 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 what really had me encouraged about Lawrence in this fight, I know a lot of people criticize him saying he's boring. Like uh, Jayo Pattaya, who was a unified champion or has one of the belts in the, in the Cruiserweight division, he... Um, he criticized Lawrence, and I'll, I'll I'll do a separate video on that. But I, I was encouraged because even though he didn't get the knockout, you gotta understand, he's only been with he's only been training with Sugar Hill Stewart for like two for two months, and two months is not enough time for a trainer to implement his ideas on a fighter who's only who has about what what is it nineteen pro fights, twenty pro fights, something like that. So um, all things considered, I was very encouraged because when Lawrence would close the gap or David Light would smother him, I didn't see his first reaction uh, in this fight be, oh, let me hold on to him and maul him. I didn't see as much mauling from Lawrence Acoli as I've seen. 
I actually saw a guy who was boxing discipline off the jab for a prolonged period of time. And I saw a guy who was dedicated to keeping the fight in the center of the ring. I saw a guy that was mixing in the right hand. And I, I just saw a guy that was setting things up and, and, and just, you know, thinking in there. Because sometimes you can watch Lawrence Coley fight and you can see him mauling and smothering his own work and things are ugly and it can become a foul and fast performance. But this is a fight where I think you can take some things here and you can build off of them. So, yeah, will this be a fight we look at for Lawrence and say he was great? No, it's not one I'm probably going to ever revisit, but, um, you know, I, I, I think um, I see a guy that's leveled up in the boxing IQ department. I see a guy that's, you know, more switched on thinking in the ring. And I see a guy who's just more mentally sharp and focused in the ring. And I, and I feel like that's the first step for Lawrence into becoming the fighter that Sugar Hill Stewart I, uh, is, is, is trying to mold him to become. Because I, personally, I think it's going to work out. I think, I think Sugar Hill Stewart will um, get a tune out of Lawrence. And I think Sugar Hill Stewart will... Turn Lawrence Okoye into the fighter, uh, the best fighter he could possibly be, and that'll be a nightmare fighter for anybody in the cruiserweight division. And he's already a nightmare fighter for the, anybody in the cruiserweight division. So imagine when he gets timing with Sugar Hill Stewart and he starts learning what Sugar Hill Stewart calls his punching power range, and and, and really starts lining people up with that for that right hand. Then they're gonna really be in trouble, you know. So uh, I'm not gonna judge it too harshly after David Life fight, but yeah, going back to Billum Smith, it's a fight that we need. Um, it's a great fight. Chris Bill Smith to me is one of the most exciting fighters in boxing. You know, he was a guy that um, felt like I maybe I probably underrated him a little bit for, for until the Isaac Chamberlain fight. But then, you know, his last two fights, particularly against Chamberlain and Arnold Joja, he's shown what he's about. He's shown, and, and and he's shown what he's about in his career. But particularly in those two fights, he's really shown you what he's all about. So, to me, Lawrence knows he's going to be in for a real dog fight when he fights Chris Bill Smith, and that that right there already lets me know. That Lawrence will be his best self because anything less than his best self will get him put on the canvas, nailed to the canvas, and we will have a new WBO Cruiserweight champion if this fight goes ahead with Chris Bill Smith. So, uh, yeah, that's my take on Lawrence Okoye and, and Chris Bill Smith and them verbally agreeing to the fight. Obviously, that doesn't mean that the fight is happening yet because, um, you know, they still have to, if the fight has agreed with it, they still have to iron out the other details so far, as far as money and purse splits and, and these kind of things, rematch clauses, those kind of things. But Chris Billingsmith doesn't have a opponent for that May 27 card in Bournemouth. And that would just be, you know, Chris would come early for the, for, for, for the Cruiserweight uh, division if that fight could get made because it's one of the best matches that could, that could be made in the Cruiserweight division, especially in British boxing. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Dania. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.